Well, a really warm hello to you all. And I'm back up in the loft today. And I'm looking forward to having a bit of fun with this excellent 1969 item. Well, I've said 1969, that's an approximation because there is no paperwork, but uh, we are looking at the Triang, Hornby, Battle of Britain loco, Winston Churchill. And you can see that it's still in its British rail guise. So when we get into the early 70s, it's repainted and it has Southern on the tender. But uh, look at it, R356S, Battle of Britain class, loco, Winston Churchill with R38 tender. I can't wait to get into this box and see whether we can get this back to life. Now, if you saw me doing some unboxing of trying items the other day, I'll leave a link below if you didn't. This was one of the things that came out of a, a box from long-term storage, and we're gonna get it running today if we can. So, an excellent box. The cellophane's in great condition, still got all its flaps, look a little bit of loose historic sellotape there, all the things I like to see on a nice old Triang Hornby box. So, yeah, the R38 tender. Let's just get this out. These polystyrene trays, I think they shrink a bit, so things get a bit tight, but uh, check that out. Lovely looking, crisp, tender. The um, the lining along the side and the, the actual British Rail emblems all look good. We've got sleeve plastic wheels, but all nice and free. Not a whole lot of anything needs doing to that, so we can put that to one side. So I'm going to get the loco out in a minute. Now, there are no instructions, paperwork or anything with this model. It has been used, so it's going to be great to get it going again. But let's take a look quickly at this 1969 catalogue. And you'll notice it's in uh, portrait there it's uh, the the way it's laid out so rather than a landscape it's a lovely portrait formatted and um, look at that we've got some freight liner action there the crane lots of new freight liner items to add to layout so let's just quickly get over to the next page look at these sets now don't they look good um, the Cara Bell, it's a favourite. Freightmaster, just great items. This Pullman Express looks really nice as well. But look at the colours now of the diesel Pullman. Lovely in the grey and blue. We've got the uh, brilliant, this was on the cover I believe, this Bobo, the electric. That's a great loco, got a high mech there. Stevenson's Rocket still going strong. And look at these starter sets, very colourful. Got loads of catenary items. Because indeed we've got these two wonderful locos. We've got the EM2 still and the, the excellent Bobo. So let's get into some steam. And look at that, what a great layout there of locos to look at. Though so they have sneaked a couple of diesels in here and the Look at that, we've got that uh, Canadian transcontinental type loco there, but uh, the R59S long running model and the Princess Royal Britannia still got the excellent dark black wheels on it. So let's get over the page and look at some more. And here, look at that, a really striking picture there of the Winston Churchill. It does say with crew. Well, there's none in the box with this one, but uh, yeah, what a lovely looking locomotive. M7 there, really interesting loco around tight corners. Still got this wonderful double-ended transcontinental diesel. The ever-present R751 class 37. And then of course, look at this. I think this is the first year these appeared in the catalogue. 
um, heavy die cast metal locomotives built for trying Hornby by Wren. And we can fast forward now to today where metal bodied locos seem to be making somewhat of a comeback. Premium prices on those. Well, there's some premium prices on these as well. Um, let's take a quick look at the price list. So first of all, I'm looking for, um, this is slightly moth eaten price list from 1st of January, 1969. Let's take a look at the, um, let's try and find the, where is it now? Goodness, I thought I'd got it all found. I am looking for the, um, so I can see the Flying Scotsman. There's two versions there. So I hope you can see these steam. Oh, here we are. Look, here it is. The R356S 462 Battle of Britain class loco Winston Churchill with crew and tender. Um, I do hope that's showing up. And I think that's 97 shillings and sixpence. But let's just have a look at these heavy die cast locomotives. And you can see that uh, they are indeed quite a bit more expensive right up there at 149 pounds nearly 150 shillings so um the barnstable look at that 169 shillings and sixpence so not cheap items but uh, glorious locos well we'll probably take another look at this catalog in the future but uh i'm gonna move it to one side now because i want to get back to the loco so i'm just going to try and ease this out and the just pop it down there you can see that this is a little bit scuffed up lots of little bits of paint and marks where the loco has been slid in and out and a little bit of cracking so yeah the box has seen well the inlay has seen um, better days but it's still in really good condition and it's got the model number there but let's just uh, look at this now it's slightly um, scuffed up there's a little bit of marking on the the body here and there some dubious bits of uh i don't know whether that's corrosion or what but there's something there can you see that just by my thumb but still it retains the look look there down the chimney there's the synchro smoke unit it still retains a great look with a bit of patina so i'm just going to pop that down because I want to just slip a bit of foam over it and then we'll take a look at the underneath. So, bogies look good, everything looks good. Now, the first thing I notice when I, that, I don't know whether you can just see that wheel just moving against the crank pin, crank pin. that's quite stiff. There's a little bit of backlash in the centre wheel, but the front wheel, I think, is probably C solid. So we've got some issues with this. So I think we'll start stripping it down. Now, I'll do a bit of stripping down um, until we come to a point possibly where I have to cut. But let's just get the, the two. Um, let's get the rear pony off and the front bogey. Let's just see how nicely these come out. Pop that to one side. Let's see if I can just keep the parts in, in frame. So the beauty of these brass screws, if you get a really snug screwdriver, they do come undone beautifully. Um, but be careful because it's not been unknown for them to shear off if you do them too tightly so really simple valve gear on this model which is uh, quite good so um, we've got a securing screw let me see if I can bring that into frame we've got a securing screw down there and then the sort of triang hornby two lugs so I want to get this off and I'm just reaching for a, a better screwdriver because I don't want to mark the screw so I'm just going to loosen it very carefully and I know that you can't really see me undoing this screw but I don't want to 
burr up the screw or damage the plastic of the the body shell now I'm wondering if I've now got that undone enough so I'm just going to see if I can reach in there you can see lovely black screw in good condition so all being well now we should be able to slip this body shell off so I'm just going to ease it over the it's really stiff you see you can't move it backwards because of the synchro smoke unit so you do indeed have to hinge it up at a bit of an alarming angle and then you can just wiggle it and free it from these lugs at the back so let's just put the chassis down for a minute check out the body shell and it's really clean inside actually so that's that's great to see um, we have got something to look at there so i really do like to see that triang logo and of course it doesn't say hornby in there because they haven't changed the molding and this came along many years before the amalgamation okay so let's have a look well the gear is i mean they all look quite bright um it's very difficult to tell whether much has been going on with this smoke unit um, i'll tell you what we'll do we'll just have a look inside it so i'm just going to remove this screw because when when i run these locos without trying to use the smoke i do indeed take the elements out so what i'm going to try and do on camera now is i'm just releasing this long screw just move the wiring to one side i'm going to lift the top carefully off this smoke unit you can see the wadding in the bottom just put that there now let me pick it up so you can get a good look at the element in there now i haven't tested that yet but there's not much burning so i would imagine that's all right but i'm what i tend to do is whip them out and just place them in the back of the unit so they don't just burn out unnecessarily i mean we can do a little bit more disassembly before i have to get my soldering iron out um, in fact what i think i want to do on this model is if you see this black wire here that goes to the pickups i'm going to unsolder the um the connection to the pickup so i can pull the wire through so i'm just going to undo and see if i can ease the pickup away because we're going to have to take the motor out and get some penetrating oil onto these axles so i'm just going to get those two screws now look we found a spacer there that um yeah i can't quite say where that's come from probably i can see exactly underneath the smoke unit there's a there's an actual let me bring this up into the camera i'll just put this to one side i don't quite know why that's there let's just get the two screws out so we don't lose them for the pickup but if i hold the underside of the smoke unit you can just see if i can get the light right where that piece of brass went so i think that's just a spacer probably to make sure the gear mesh is all right okay so what i'm going to do now is just see whether i can gently ease the pickup plate away from the bottom of the loco and those pickups are, are looking very discolored let's see if we can get a look at those in a second if I can just ask a little bit of black wire to go through so I can just pull this gently away to show you. OK, we're doing quite well now. So hopefully you can see I'm going to unsolder the wire from the pickup tab to free the pickups off. That will mean I can just take the screw out the back of the motor and lift it off. So come back in a second when I've unsoldered that uh, wire and we'll take a look at the chassis with um, just the wheels in place. 
Okay, well, I'm hoping the soldering iron is heated up a little bit now. Um, there's the little bit of solder I just want to warm up to release the wire. So let's just see. There we go. So I'll just put the soldering iron to one side and then we'll carry on taking a look at these items. I'll just put that in a stand so it should be safe. So first of all, here's the the pickup removed and you can see I should be cleaning that face and that face um, and you should be able to see I'll probably clean up where the wire is soldered on it's not unheard of for these to be a really dry joint so sometimes after a model's been not used for a little while you do find that the wire just is loose from that so let's just get the chassis freed so we here we are we've got the wiring loom if you want to call it that the smoke unit and the motor let's take a look at the motor that's a really nice xo4 it feels good i mean i shall just clean the commutator a bit um, clean the brushes let's have a look and see how the magnet feels in this well that's quite strong still um, it's got that screwdriver so i'm not going to worry about remagging this model so all i'm going to do to the motor is the usual remove the brushes clean all the contacts clean the commutator a little bit of light oil but not too much the, the actual absorbent pads are totally dry on that and then i shall just take out and put safe in the back of this that element so electrically not much to do but here's the real problem so you can see the stripped down chassis very basic valve gear and uh, yeah i can hardly move those front wheels so i really don't want to actually take the wheels off if i can help it because the plastic bushes on the insulated side degrade now i'm just going to put the smallest amount in here from my little pot i've just put a little bit of alcohol ipa and um, i'm just going to put a cotton bud and then i'm just going to dab a little bit of alcohol on the axles because it, it really is, I mean, it's volatile, so it evaporates quite quickly. But I'm just going to put the smallest amount of IPA and hope that that will sort of get into wherever it's sticking. So let's have a look now. Well, already those are feeling a bit freer. You can see the crank pins moving, the centre wheel is moving, it's just the front wheel the front set of wheels is very stiff so i am going to apply now using finger and thumb on both wheels so we don't twist anything yeah it's starting to move but oh it's stiff but now i'm rocking it i can nearly do it with my thumb Oh, look at that. It's just brilliant when something frees up nicely like that. OK, so I'm not going anywhere um, near more alcohol. I'm going to find some light lubricant. So if you just bear with me a second. So... In this oiler, with the extremely long nozzle, I've got a very, very thin penetrating oil. Not an oil I normally use. So now I'm going to try and do this on camera, but it's not particularly easy. I'm just going to see if I can get a little drop on each of the bearings. I'm just going to do the two axles not the centre axle, just the two that were slightly tight. And let's hope the capillary action will draw this lubricant in. So let's have another look. 
Yeah, that's feeling really good. Now the wheels are very dirty. Now the thing that I'm wondering is, is this going to be a bit like the the Ren Loco the other day where there's so much contamination between the, um, the axle and the body that we don't get continuity. So I'm just going to see if I can dry out the excess oil now. A little bit of contamination on the end of the cotton bud there. But let's just see how this looks. Let me see if I can get it up close so you can see. And already that's that's running quite smoothly now. Now, is there any side play in these? They're very tight actually. Haven't got my back-to-back -back gauge. But they're all quite tight but it's definitely much freer okay let me just move the camera slightly and let's pop it down have a look you can see that that's oh i can tell what i mean this is something that you don't always get with trying hornby but this is a really what i call a really good balanced loco now, when you put them on the rolling road, and you've probably seen them on my channel or other people's channels, you get a slight oscillation if the wheel's off centre, or there's just a little bit of, you know, lack of sort of balancing of the wheels, and the, the loco tends to rock about. Well, this one, I can tell you, is going to be a super runner, because the way it just goes along that track is lovely. So I'm really hoping I'm not going to take the wheels out now some people have said oh you want to use a um, a degreaser or contact cleaner or something um, they are really good items to use uh, good products i should say and they do clean very well but what i found occasionally on these more vintage and historic models is they can have a really detrimental impact on these you know the really old insulating bushes um, so I, I mean, as much as I'd like to just get in there and uh, give that a good blast with something to clean it, I really want to try and keep those bushes intact. And old plastic, you know, we're going back to 1969, so well over 50, nearly 60, 63, 64, so even 65 year old item. Um, plastic undergoes lots of changes over the years so I'm going to keep modern solvents away. So first of all I'm going to go off camera now and clean up these wheels um, and then I'm going to put the electrical items back in and we're going to see whether or not we're going to be lucky enough with it running. So I mean look at the back of this wheel here can you see the contamination there? So I'm going to clean all that out just using pipe cleaners or cotton buds. I might put, now some of you have sort of given me different opinions of this stuff, saying that it might be corrosive. I've not found that myself yet, but when I've cleaned the axles, not on the motor of course, I've got a proper lubricant for the motor, but I'm going to put a little bit of this just on those axles. So I'm going to do some of this boring cleaning off camera and we'll come back shortly and see whether we've actually got a running chassis or not. Okay everyone, here's the chassis. Now let me just show you how it looks. You can see that I've given the wheels a bit of a clean um, sorted out the the motor I have tried it and it's looking good so I've removed the element from the smoke unit um, and here it is on the test track so just look over here is the old clipper and I'm just going to put a little bit of power in just the smallest amount lovely smooth runner and the axles seem to be okay on this so 
I've got away without having to take the wheels off. And look how nicely that glides along the track. I think that's going to be an excellent runner. Now, are you, can you see this? I found this the other day, it came from a, a Triang CKD kit, a lovely small screwdriver, great to use. Now look here, just some of the grease and dirt that came out of the motor and the axles and everything. But we do now have a little bit of a runner. So let's just move it on the test track. And it's quite quiet, so it's going to be interesting to see how quiet it is when we get that big old boxy body on it. But I'm just going to bring it along here now. OK, well, I've had great fun getting this going, but I want it on the layout now. So I'm going to put the body on and the other bits and bobs just here. And then we're going to move over. And uh, I think I'm going to get it running those southern coaches that we saw last week. So I'll be back with you shortly. OK, everyone, check it out. We've got a 55, could be older, year old, Triang Hornby, Battle of Britain class, Winston Churchill, R356S. And I mustn't forget the R38 tender, ready to roll on the Triang Super 4 Vintage Railway. I've got a converter wagon on the back. Now, a green one would be nice, so I reckon I might paint one of these up another day because look at these Southern Mark 1 Hornby 00 Super Detail coaches. They look quite good. Now, I've not talked about those, so we'll come to those in another video. But a heavy train, but this loco is up to it because I'm just about to feed some power into its ancient X04 motor. And it moves away nicely. Takes the crossovers. Got some diamond crossings down here. Look at that. Goes across that. And now it's hauling hard. Pulling these heavy tin plate coaches. But it won't slip because it's got a bit of magnesium there. Those lovely black bullied wheels are gripping the Super 4 track. And listen to it. What a great noise from this loco. Not too echoey. A little bit of gear noise. More power. This is only going to get better as it runs in after its maintenance. Just love the noises these heavy nylon wheel coaches make on this older track. vintage running at its best it's just i suppose you can tell i'm a bit enthusiastic but this is great fun not only just the running but bringing this loco back to life you know the wheels almost seized up motor hadn't turned for decades and look at it now look what it's doing right let's give it a bit more power And to keep it company in the station, I've got the Britannia from the last couple of videos. I'm just going to move that away. I will finish the video enjoying a couple of the 1960s best locos from Triang, Triang Hornby. Wow, look at that. It's just hauling those mark one coaches now someone mentioned in the comments they wanted to see a couple of blue and greys mixed in so i have indeed i think i put a buffet in there and uh, one near the back as well so we've got a mixed rake there today and the britannia loves it okay so i'm going to take a bit of power out of the britannia We'll watch the Winston Churchill. And I think that's going to bring us near to the end of this week's vintage escapades. 
great satisfaction from taking these old items apart and getting them working again and even more fun just running them around the layout. They're virtually unstoppable these items. You can go right back to the 1950s and the old acetate it warps and it twists but the locos underneath still respond to a little bit of care and attention and they'll run again. And I'm pretty sure that whoever's looking after these in another 40 or 50 years will still be able to coax some life out of them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the action up here today. I've had great fun. And I'm just going to relax now and watch these go around for a few more circuits of the layout. And in my spare time, I'll be thinking about what I can show you next time. So thanks for watching. And as the Britannia and Winston Churchill make their way around the Super 4 main lines, until the next video, I'll say goodbye.